providing for the reorganization of the central administrative staff of large school districts, requiring a plan of operation to be developed for each local school precinct, requiring annual surveys to be administered to persons involved with local school precincts and to the central administrative staff of large school districts, providing for the continuation of an advisory committee to oversee the implementation of the reorganization of large school districts, repealing provisions requiring the reorganization of the Clark County School District, and providing other matters properly relating thereto. Legislative Council's Digest. During the 2015 legislative session, the legislature enacted Assembly Bill No. 394, AB 394, which created an advisory committee to develop a plan and recommendations to reorganize the Clark County School District Advisory Committee into local school precincts. To assist the advisory committee, AB 394 also created a technical advisory committee. The Advisory Committee and Technical Advisory Committee were appointed and met throughout the legislative interim. In addition, AB 394 directed the State Board of Education to adopt regulations necessary and appropriate to carry out the plan developed by the Advisory Committee. Chapter 543, Statutes of Nevada 2015, p. 3842 during the 2015-2016 interim. The Advisory Committee developed such a plan and recommendations to reorganize the Clark County School District. The State Board of Education then adopted a regulation to carry out the plan and recommendations which was approved by the Legislative Commission and filed with the Secretary of State on September 9, 2016. LCB file no. R142-16 Section 44 of this bill declares the regulation adopted by the State Board of Education to be void and unenforceable on the effective date of this bill, except that the Clark County School District remains responsible for reimbursing the cost of the consultant with whom a contract was entered into to oversee the transition of the school district. In addition, Section 48 of this bill repeals AB 394. Instead, this bill places in statute the requirements for the reorganization of a large school district, which is defined in Section 7 of this bill as a school district which has more than 79th session, 2017. To 100,000 pupils enrolled in its public schools, currently the Clark County School District. Section 15 of this bill deems each public school within the large school district, other than the charter school or university school for profoundly gifted pupils, to be a local school precinct which is operated under site-based decision-making, providing the authority to carry out certain responsibilities which have traditionally been carried out by the large school district to instead be carried out by the local school precincts. Section 15 also clarifies the effect on zoning and enrollment by prohibiting a local school precinct from changing or affecting any zone of attendance or changing the large school district's policy concerning the eligibility and selection of a pupil to attend a special day school. In addition, Section 15 prohibits a large school district from reducing the size of a special day school or converting such a school into any other type of school unless, one, specifically provided by law, Two, the reduction or conversion has been recommended by the school and approved by the superintendent and the board of trustees of the large school district. Or three, the superintendent, with the approval of the board of trustees, has determined that there is good cause for the reduction or conversion. Section 16 of this bill requires the superintendent of a large school district to transfer to each local school precinct in the large school district the authority to carry out the following responsibilities. 1. Select and directly supervise the staff for the local school precinct. 2. Procure from the large school district or elsewhere necessary equipment, services and supplies to carry out the plan of operation for the local school precinct in accordance with applicable policies of the large school district, and three, develop a balanced budget for the local school precinct. Section 16 requires the large school district to remain responsible for paying for and carrying out all other responsibilities that have not been transferred to the local school precincts that are necessary for the operation of the large school district and the local school precincts and list certain responsibilities that are not transferred under the terms of Section 16. However, 
Section 16 authorizes the superintendent of a large school district in consultation with the principals, school associate superintendents and organizational teams to transfer additional authority to the local school precincts, including authority to carry out any of the responsibilities listed as remaining with central services so long as the transfer does not violate state or federal law and is in the best interest of the pupils of the local school precincts. Section 16 further requires a large school district to procure any equipment, services and supplies necessary from another business or entity to provide maintenance and repair if a large school district is unable to provide necessary maintenance or repair of buildings or grounds of a local school precinct in a timely manner. Section 17 of this bill requires the superintendent of a large school district to make certain estimates regarding items included in the budgets of the local school precincts on or before January 15th of each year. Section 17 also requires each local school precinct to carry forward its year-end balance to the next school year and requires the large school district to account for any amount that is carried forward as a restricted fund balance. Section 18 of this bill requires the superintendent of a large school district on or before January 15th of each year to make certain estimates regarding funding and to estimate the amount of money that will be allocated to the local school precincts for the next school year. The amount transferred is required to be at least 80% of the total amount of unrestricted money of the large school district in the first school year and 85% of that total amount for each subsequent school year that the large school district is subject to the provisions of this bill. 79th Session, 2017 3. Section 19 of this bill sets forth the manner in which a large school district is required to determine the allocation that will be made to each local school precinct. Money must be allocated on a per-pupil basis and by assigning weights to categories of pupils that result in greater funding being allocated for pupils in those categories. The categories and weights must be the same as those established by the Department of Education for the state funding formula, except the large school district may assign a weight to a category not established by the department with the approval of the department, and the large school district may also seek a variance from the department to apply different weights to specific categories or to have a different distribution of weights than those established by the department. Section 20 of this bill requires the superintendent of a large school district to inform each local school precinct on or before January 15th of each year of the estimated amount of money that will be allocated to the local school precinct for the next school year. Section 20 also prescribes the manner in which a large school district must account for the opening of new local school precincts when allocating money to the local school precincts. Finally, Section 20 requires an adjustment to be made to the allocation to each local school precinct on or before November 1st of each year to reflect the actual pupil population at the local school precinct. Section 21 of this bill requires the superintendent of a large school district to compare and make available certain financial and other information related to each local school precinct beginning November 1st of the year after the first year that a large school district operates pursuant to the provisions of this bill and on or before November 1st of each year thereafter. Section 22 of this bill requires the superintendent of a large school district to assign a school associate superintendent to oversee the local school precincts, but such a person must not be assigned to more than 25 local school precincts. Section 22 also provides a procedure for the interview and selection of a school associate superintendent, which allows principals and certain local governments the opportunity to participate in the process. Section 23 of this bill prescribes the duties of a school associate superintendent and requires the school associate superintendent to be held accountable for all aspects of the performance of the local school precincts to which he or she is assigned to oversee. Section 24 of this bill establishes certain duties of the principal of a local school precinct, including a duty to 1. Establish an organizational team for the local school precinct. 2. Develop a plan of operation for the local school precinct for the next school year. 3. Submit the plan of operation for the local school precinct to the school associate superintendent for approval. And 4. Select the staff necessary to carry out the plan of operation for the local school precinct. 
Section 42 of this bill requires the Department of Education to determine whether principals are prepared to take on the additional responsibilities and whether to recommend revising licensing requirements or creating a separate endorsement for the principals of local school precincts. Section 24 of this bill also prescribes the contents of the plan of operation for a local school precinct which must include a plan to improve the achievement of pupils and a budget for the use of the money allocated to the local school precinct. The budget must be based upon the average unit cost for each type of employee of the local school precinct and the actual cost for the procurement of equipment, services and supplies and for any other item included in the budget. Section 43 of this bill requires the Department of Education, on or before July 1, 2018, to assess the equity of using the average unit cost to budget for salaries and benefits of staff and recommend to the State Board of Education and the Nevada Legislature whether to continue using average unit cost in that manner. 79th Session, 2017 for Section 25 of this bill requires the principal of a local school precinct to present the plan of operation for the local school precinct at a public meeting held at the local school precinct to which the plan of operation applies. Section 25 also prescribes the process by which the school associate superintendent may approve the plan of operation and requires the plan to be approved unless the plan violates any federal or state law or policy of the large school district. Mm -hmm. Section 29 of this bill provides the manner in which an organizational team may appeal the plan of operation for the local school precinct if the team opposes any part of the plan. Section 25 authorizes the principal to make adjustments to the budget included in the plan of operation after the plan has been approved upon consultation with the organizational team and approval of the school associate superintendent. Section 26 of this bill establishes the membership of the organizational team for a local school precinct and the manner in which the members are selected. Section 26 makes the principal of the local school precinct a non-voting member on the organizational team. Voting members of the organizational team include teachers and other licensed educational personnel, other employees of the local school precinct, and parents and guardians of pupils who are enrolled in the local school precinct. In addition, Section 26 provides that if a local school precinct is a middle school, junior high or high school, a pupil must be elected to serve as a non-voting member who assists with matters relating to the plan of operation of the local school precinct. Section 26 further authorizes one or more non-voting members from the community at large to be selected by the organizational team. Section 26 provides immunity from civil liability to the organizational team and its volunteer members for carrying out the duties assigned to the organizational team and its members. Section 27 of this bill provides for the appointment of the leadership and organization of an organizational team. Section 28 of this bill sets forth the duties of an organizational team, which include 1. Providing assistance and advice to the principal of the local school precinct regarding the plan of operation for the local school precinct. 2. Assisting in carrying out the plan of operation for the local school precinct, and 3. Assisting with the selection of the principal of the local school precinct. Section 28 also authorizes the organizational team to provide input regarding the principal of the local school precinct to the school associate superintendent up to two times each year. Section 30 of this bill authorizes the governing body of a city or the board of county commissioners of the county in which the large school district is located to establish one or more community education advisory boards to provide advice and assistance to the organizational team of any local school precinct and the board of trustees of the large school district. Section 31 of this bill requires annual surveys to be administered to all persons involved with the local school precincts to measure their satisfaction with the local school precinct and to employees of the central services and employees who interact with the central services to determine how satisfied they are with the services provided. A summary of the results of such surveys are required to be made public. Section 32 of this bill requires an annual report concerning the local school precincts to be compiled and forwarded to the governor, the superintendent of public instruction, and the Nevada legislature. 
Section 33 of this bill requires the Superintendent of Public Instruction to take such actions as deemed necessary and appropriate to ensure that a large school district carries out the reorganization of the large school district in accordance with the requirements set forth in this bill. Section 33 requires a large school district to cooperate with the Superintendent of Public Instruction in carrying out the 79th Session, 2017. Five provisions of this bill, including providing any necessary financial or other information that is requested, and list specific information which must be provided to the Superintendent of Public Instruction upon request. Section 34 of this bill requires the State Board of Education to adopt regulations it deems necessary to carry out the provisions of this bill. Sections 38 and 39 of this bill clarify the manner in which the laws concerning local government purchasing apply to local school precincts so that purchases made by a local school precinct are not aggregated with other local school precincts for the large school district. Section 41 of this bill requires a large school district to comply with the provisions of this bill notwithstanding any time frame set forth in this bill. In addition, Section 45 of this bill makes the advisory committee that was created in AB 394 continue with the same members as an advisory committee to monitor the implementation of the reorganization of large school districts until August 31, 2018. Any vacancies on the advisory committee are filled in the same manner as the original appointment. Explanation. Matter in bolded italics is new. Matter between brackets, omitted material is material to be omitted. The people of the state of Nevada, represented in Senate and Assembly, do enact as follows. Section 1. Chapter 388G of NRS is hereby amended by adding thereto the provisions set forth as sections 2 to 34, inclusive, of this Act. Sec. 2. 1. The legislature hereby finds that in large school districts, a because of their significantly larger enrollment of pupils, greater number of local school precincts and more expansive and extensive scope of operations, large school districts are prone to develop large, complex and potentially inefficient, cumbersome and unresponsive bureaucracies that tend to become too dependent upon a centralized operational model where most decision making is made by central services. B. Under such a centralized operational model in large school districts, the operational structure and culture may result in an entrenched and inflexible operational paradigm where decisions are made by central services without regular, consistent or adequate examination, exploration and consideration of the particularized, specialized or localized circumstances, needs and concerns of each local school precinct. C. When more decision-making is transferred from central services and large school districts to the site-based administrators, teachers and other staff and the parents and legal guardians of pupils in each local school precinct, the state's system of public schools is better structured to educate efficiently, effectively and 79th Session, 2017 Six successfully the diverse and varied populations of pupils within large school districts because a site-based operational model encourages decision-making that is more innovative, proactive and responsive to the particularized, specialized or localized circumstances, needs and concerns of each local school precinct. D. To promote, achieve and advance the educational policies and objectives of transitioning and restructuring large school districts from a centralized operational model to a more decentralized and autonomous site-based operational model, it is necessary and essential to transfer and redirect more funding from the control of central services to the control of the site-based administrators, teachers and other staff and the parents and legal guardians of pupils in each local school precinct and ensure that more funding follows pupils with increased or specialized needs or abilities to each local school precinct. 2. The legislature hereby declares that it is in the best interests of this state, beneficial to the public's welfare and necessary and essential to the efficient, effective and successful operation of the state system of public schools to implement and carry out the provisions of sections 2 to 34, inclusive, of this act in large school districts for the purposes of promoting, achieving and advancing the educational policies and objectives of this state. Sec. 
3. As used in sections 2 to 34, inclusive of this act, unless the context otherwise requires, the words and terms defined in sections 4 to 13, inclusive of this act have the meanings ascribed to them in those sections. Sec. 4. Board of Trustees means the Board of Trustees of a large school district. Sec. 5. Central Services means the administrative staff of a large school district who provide services to the local school precincts in the large school district. Sec. 6. Confidential Information means 1. Personal information, including, without limitation, the home address, employment records, academic records and disciplinary records of a pupil or any other person, and 2. Any other information declared by law to be confidential. Sec. 7. Large school district means any school district in this state which has more than 100,000 pupils enrolled in its public schools. Sec. 8. Local school precinct means a public school which is deemed to be a local school precinct pursuant to Section 15 of this Act. 79th Session, 2017. 7 Sec. 9. Organizational team means the organizational team established by the principal of a local school precinct pursuant to Section 24 of this Act. Sec. 10. Plan of operation means the plan of operation for a local school precinct which is approved pursuant to Section 25 of this Act. Sec. 11. School associate superintendent means a person assigned by the superintendent to oversee the operation of designated local school precincts pursuant to Section 22 of this Act. Sec. 12. Special day school means a public school that operates as a magnet school or program a school or program for career and technical education, a school or program for special education or an alternative program with education. Sec. 13. Superintendent means the superintendent of schools of a large school district. Sec. 14. 1. Except as otherwise provided in this section, the provisions of sections 2 to 34, inclusive of this act, apply to each large school district. 2. If any school district that is not a large school district at the beginning of a school year becomes a large school district during the school year, the provisions of sections 2 to 34, inclusive, of this act apply to that school district at the beginning of the immediately succeeding school year. Sec. 15. 1. Except as otherwise provided in this subsection, each public school within a large school district shall be deemed a local school precinct, including, without limitation, any school operating as a special day school. A charter school or university school for profoundly gifted pupils shall not be deemed a local school precinct. 2. Each local school precinct must operate using site-based decision-making in which certain authority to carry out responsibilities is transferred from the large school district to the local school precinct as set forth in Section 16 of this Act. 3. On and after the effective date of this Act, a special day school must not be reduced in size or converted into any other type of school unless otherwise specifically provided by law or a the reduction or conversion is recommended by the local school precinct and approved by the superintendent and the board of trustees of the large school district or b the superintendent with the approval of the board of trustees of the large school district determines that there is good cause to reduce the size of the special day school or convert the special day school into another type of school. 79th Session, 2017. 8. 4. This section does not authorize a local school precinct a to change, grant a waiver regarding or in any way affect any zone of attendance which has been established pursuant to NRS 388.040. B. To change the policy of the large school district concerning the eligibility and selection of a pupil to attend a special day school. Sec. 16. 1. Except as otherwise provided in this section, the superintendent shall transfer authority to each local school precinct to carry out responsibilities in accordance with this section and the plan of operation approved for the local school precinct. 2. 
the superintendent shall transfer to each local school precinct the authority to carry out the following responsibilities. A. Select for the local school precinct the 1. Teachers 2. Administrators other than the principal and 3. Other staff who work under the direct supervision of the principal. B. Direct the supervision of the staff of the local school precinct, including, without limitation, taking any necessary disciplinary action which does not involve a violation of law or which does not require an investigation to comply with the law. C. Procure such equipment, services and supplies as the local school precinct deems necessary or advisable to carry out the plan of operation for the local school precinct. Equipment. Services and supplies may be procured from the large school district in which the local school precinct is located or elsewhere, but such procurement must be carried out in accordance with the applicable policies of the large school district. D. Develop a balanced budget for the local school precinct for the use of the money allocated to the local school precinct, which must include, without limitation, the manner in which to expend any money not used for the purposes described in paragraphs A, B, and C. E, any other responsibility for which authority is transferred pursuant to subsection 7. 3, except as otherwise provided in subsection 7, the large school district shall remain responsible for paying for and carrying out all other responsibilities necessary for the operation of the local school precincts in the large school district which have not been transferred to the local school precincts pursuant to subsection 2, including, without limitation, responsibility for 79th session, 2017. 9. A. Negotiating the salaries benefits and other conditions of employment of administrators, teachers and other staff necessary for the operation of the local school precinct, b. transportation services, c. food services, d. risk management services, e. financial services, including payroll services, f. qualifying employees for any position within the large school district, g. services to promote and ensure equity and diversity, H. Services to ensure compliance with all laws relating to civil rights. I. Identification, evaluation, program placement, pupil assignment and other services provided to pupils pursuant to the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, 20 U.S.C. Paragraph Paragraph 1400 at SEQ, and the regulations adopted pursuant thereto or pursuant to Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, 29 U.S.C. paragraph 794, and the regulations adopted pursuant thereto, J. Legal services, K. Maintenance and repair of buildings, L. Maintenance of the grounds of the local school precinct, M. Custodial services, N. Implementation of the master plan developed for English learners, O. Internal audits, P. Information technology services, Q. Police services, R. Emergency management services, S. Carrying out state-mandated assessments and accountability reports, and T. Capital projects. 4. To the greatest extent possible, the principal of a local school precinct shall select teachers who are licensed and in good standing before selecting substitutes to teach at the local school precinct. The principal, in consultation with the organizational team, shall make every effort to ensure that effective licensed teachers are employed at the local school precinct. 5. If a large school district is unable to provide any necessary maintenance or repair of the buildings or grounds of a local school precinct in a timely manner, the large school district must, at the expense of the large school district, procure any equipment, services and supplies necessary from another entity or business to 79th session 2017 10 provide such maintenance or repair for the local school precinct or take any other necessary action 6 to the extent that any member of the staff of central services is assigned to provide services at a local school precinct on a temporary or permanent basis the decision regarding the assignment and any subsequent reassignment of the member of the staff must be made in consultation with the principal of the local school precinct and the school associate superintendent. 7. On or before January 15th of each year, 
the superintendent shall determine, in consultation with the principals, school associate superintendents and organizational teams of each local school precinct, any additional authority that is not listed in subsection 2 to recommend transferring to one or more local school precincts. Such authority may include the authority to carry out any of the responsibilities listed in subsection 3 which is not prohibited by law, other than the responsibility for capital projects, if it is determined that transferring the authority will serve the best interests of the pupils. The recommendation to transfer authority to one or more local school precincts must be submitted for approval by the Board of Trustees of the Large School District. The Board of Trustees of the Large School District shall consider such a recommendation and determine whether to approve the transfer of additional authority at its next regularly scheduled meeting if submitted within five working days before the next regularly scheduled meeting and otherwise the recommendation shall be considered at the following meeting. 8. If the authority to carry out any responsibility is transferred to a local school precinct pursuant to subsection 7, the large school district must allocate additional money to the local school precinct in an amount equal to the amount that would otherwise be paid by the large school district to carry out the responsibility. SEC 17. 1. On or before January 15th of each year, to assist the local school precincts in preparing their budgets for the next school year, the superintendent shall establish and make public a. The average unit cost for each type of employee employed to work at a local school precinct, which is determined based upon the average unit cost across the large school district. A separate average unit cost must be established for teachers and substitute teachers, respectively. b. A list of equipment, services and supplies that a local school precinct may obtain from the large school district using the money allocated to the local school precinct and the cost for such. 79th session 2017 11 equipment services and supplies the cost of such equipment services and supplies must not exceed the actual cost to the large school district to provide the equipment services and supplies to the local school precinct two each local school precinct must carry forward its year-end balance to the next school year for use by the local school precinct the large school district must account for any such amount that is carried forward as a restricted fund balance. SEC 18. 1. On or before January 15th of each year, the superintendent shall establish for the next school year a. The estimated total amount of money to be received by the large school district from all sources, including any year-end balance that is carried forward and shall identify the sources of such year-end balance and whether the year-end balance is restricted. If the year-end balance is restricted, the superintendent shall identify the source of the restriction and the total amount of money to be received by the large school district that is unrestricted. Money may only be identified as restricted if it is required by state or federal law, if it is proscribed by the department or if it has been otherwise encumbered b the estimated percentage of the amount of money determined pursuant to paragraph a to be unrestricted that will be allocated to the local school mm -hmm. precincts the percentage must equal one for the first school year in which the large school district operates pursuant to the provisions of sections 2 to 34 inclusive of this act not less than 80 percent of the total amount of money from all sources received by the large school district that is unrestricted for the school year and two for each subsequent school year 85 percent of the total amount of money from all sources received by the large school district that is unrestricted for the school year c the estimated amount of categorical funding to be received by the large school district and whether such funding is restricted in a manner that prohibits the large school district from including that categorical funding in the amount of funding per pupil that is allocated to the local school precincts d the total estimated amount of money that will be allocated to each local school precinct as determined pursuant to section 20 of this act two the superintendent shall post the information established pursuant to subsection 1 on the internet website of the large 79th session 2017 12 school district and make the information available to any person upon request sec 19 1 
The amount of money allocated to a local school precinct by the large school district must be determined on a per pupil basis by assigning a category to each pupil and assigning weights to each category in a manner that provides a greater amount of funding for each pupil who belongs to certain designated categories. Mm -hmm. Except as otherwise provided in subsections 2 and 3, the categories for which a greater weight must be assigned must include without limitation, mm -hmm. a pupils who are eligible for free or reduced price lunches pursuant to 42 USC paragraph paragraph 1751 at SEC, or a similar alternative measure prescribed by the State Board of Education, b pupils who are English learners, c pupils with disabilities, and d gifted and talented pupils. 2 except as otherwise provided in subsection 3, to establish the weight for each category of pupil as required pursuant to subsection 1, the large school district shall apply the same weights and distribution of weights established by the department for the state funding formula. If the large school district wishes to apply a different weight to any category or a different distribution of weights, the large school district must submit a request for a variance to use a different weight or distribution of weights to the department for approval. 3. Except if a specialty school is proportionally reduced in size in the manner authorized pursuant to Section 15 of this Act, the weights and categories assigned pursuant to this section must ensure that any specialty school or rural school that exists on the effective date of this act or before the school district becomes a large school district continues to receive not less than the proportionally larger amount of money that was used to fund this specialty school or rural school before those dates. Four, upon receipt of a request for a variance pursuant to subsection two, the department shall review the proposed weights distribution of weights or request for a variance and inform the large school district whether it approves the proposed weights, distribution of weights or request within 30 days. Once approved, the weights assigned for each category of pupil and the distribution of weights must be posted on the internet website of the large school district and made available to any person upon request. 79th Session, 2017. 13. 5. As used in this section, distribution of weights means the manner in which it is determined which weight or weights to apply to a pupil who may qualify for more than one category for which a weight is assigned. Sec. 20. 1. On or before January 15th of each year, the superintendent shall inform each local school precinct of the estimated amount of money that will be allocated to the local school precinct for the next school year. The allocation must be based upon the number of pupils in each category who attend the local school precinct after applying the appropriate weight to each category of pupil as determined pursuant to Section 19 of this Act. 2. Except as otherwise provided in subsections 3 and 4, the number and category of pupils must be determined based upon the report of the pupils attending each local school precinct for the previous calendar quarter pursuant to NRS 387.1223. 3. If an additional local school precinct is added in the large school district for the purpose of determining the first allocation for the new local school precinct, the large school district must estimate the number of pupils in each category who will attend the new local school precinct and the effect on any existing local school precinct. If the opening of a new local school precinct is anticipated to reduce the number of pupils who will attend another local school precinct, for purposes of determining the allocation, the number of pupils must be adjusted accordingly. Four. The estimated amount of money allocated to each local school precinct for the next school year must be adjusted on or before November 1st of each year to reflect the actual number of pupils in each category who attend the local school precinct. Sec. 21. 1. On or before November 1st of the year after the first year that a large school district operates pursuant to the provisions of Sections 2 to 34, inclusive, of this Act, and on or before November 1st of each year thereafter, the superintendent shall determine for the immediately preceding school year, a, the total per pupil allocation made to each local school precinct in the large school district and the actual amount expended by the large school district for the local school precinct, 
B, the amount budgeted by each local school precinct for teacher salaries and benefits and the actual amount expended by the large school district for teacher salaries and benefits for teachers employed at each local school precinct. C, the number of teacher vacancies at each local school precinct and the amount of money included in the allocation to. 79th session, 2017. 14. That local school precinct which the local school precinct used for other purposes as a result of those vacancies, and d. The amount budgeted by each local school precinct for each type of employee other than teachers and the actual amount expended by the large school district for salaries and benefits of such employees at each local school precinct. 2. The superintendent shall post the information determined pursuant to subsection 1 on the internet website of the large school district and make the information available to any person upon request. Sec. 22. 1. The superintendent shall assign a school associate superintendent to oversee each local school precinct. Each school associate superintendent must not be assigned to oversee more than 25 local school precincts. 2. Whenever a vacancy occurs in the position of school associate superintendent, the superintendent shall post notice of the vacancy. The superintendent shall interview qualified candidates for the vacant position. At least one, but not more than two representatives of the principals of the local school precincts overseen by the vacant position must be allowed to participate in interviewing candidates for the vacant position. If a local governmental agency which has the most schools that are overseen by the vacant position is a, a city, the governing body of the city may appoint one representative to participate in interviewing candidates for the vacant position. b. Not a city, the board of county commissioners for the county in which the large school district is located may appoint one representative to participate in interviewing candidates for the vacant position. Three. Each person who participates in interviewing candidates pursuant to subsection 2 shall comply with all laws that apply to an employer when making a decision about employment. 4. Upon completion of the interviews pursuant to subsection 2 and before the superintendent makes a final determination about which candidate to hire, the superintendent must notify the governing body of the city or the board of county commissioners for the county as applicable regarding the candidate whom the superintendent intends to hire. After receiving such notice, the governing body of the city or the board of county commissioners, as applicable, may hold a public meeting within 10 days to question the superintendent and the candidate for the vacant position and receive public input. After any such meeting or, if no, 79th session, 2017, 15, such meeting is held. After 10 days, the superintendent shall, in his or her sole discretion, hire a candidate for the vacant position. 5. After the school associate superintendent is hired, the superintendent may, in his or her sole discretion, reassign and make other employment decisions concerning the school associate superintendent. Sec. 23. 1. A school associate superintendent shall, with respect to each local school precinct to which he or she is assigned to oversee, a. Provide training to and supervise the principal of the local school precinct, b. Review and approve the plan of operation for the local school precinct and assist the principal of the local school precinct in making any necessary revisions to the plan, c. Ensure that each local school precinct to which he or she is assigned to oversee remains in compliance with all applicable federal, state and local laws d provide a report in person not less than quarterly to the governing body of each city and county within which a local school precinct to which he or she is assigned to oversee is located and if created pursuant to section 30 of this act to the community education advisory board and a carry out any other duties assigned by the superintendent at his or her discretion or after approval by the superintendent of a request made by the local school precinct two the school associate superintendent must be held accountable for all aspects of the performance of each local school precinct to which he or she is assigned to oversee as used in this subsection 
performance means the overall operation of each such local school precinct as measured by a the satisfaction of the parents and legal guardians of pupils and the teachers administrators and other staff of the local school precinct as determined by the surveys administered pursuant to section 31 of this act and b the progress made by the local school precinct to satisfy the goals and objectives set forth in the statewide system of accountability for public schools sec 24 1 the principal of a local school precinct shall a establish an organizational team for the local school precinct consisting of the members described in section 26 of this act on or before october 1st of each school year 79th session 2017 16 b develop the proposed plan of operation for the local school precinct for the next school year with the assistance and advice of the organizational team and c submit the proposed plan of operation for the local school precinct to the school associate superintendent for approval two the principal of the local school precinct shall select staff for the local school precinct as necessary to carry out the plan of operation from a list provided by the superintendent. 3. The plan of operation for the local school precinct must include, without limitation, a, a plan to improve the achievement of pupils enrolled in the local school precinct, regardless of whether such a plan is required to be prepared pursuant to NRS. 385A.650 and B, a budget which itemizes the manner in which the local school precinct will use the money allocated to the local school precinct. 4. The budget included in the plan of operation for the local school precinct pursuant to subsection 3 must be based upon the average unit cost for each type of employee of the local school precinct established pursuant to paragraph A of subsection 1 of section 17 of this act. The actual cost for the procurement of equipment, services and supplies for the local school precinct and the actual cost of any other item included in the budget of the local school precinct. The budget must be developed in accordance with the criteria for determining budgetary priorities established by the Board of Trustees of the Large School District pursuant to NRS 387.301. SEC 25. 1. Before approving the plan of operation for a local school precinct, the principal of the local school precinct shall present the plan at a public meeting held in accordance with subsection 2 at the local school precinct to which the plan of operation applies. 2. The principal shall post notice of the meeting not less than three working days before the date on which the meeting will be held. Members of the public must be allowed to attend any portion of the meeting, except any portion of the meeting during which confidential information is discussed, and each meeting must include a period for public comment. A meeting held pursuant to this subsection is not subject to the provisions of Chapter 241 of NRS. 3. When the plan of operation for the local school precinct is finalized by the principal, the principal must submit the plan to the school associate superintendent for approval. After receipt of the 79th session, 2017, 17, plan of operation, the school associate superintendent must approve or deny the plan of operation within 10 days. The plan of operation must be approved unless any provision of the plan violates any federal or state law or policy of the large school district. 4. If the school associate superintendent a approves the plan of operation for a local school precinct, the school associate superintendent must notify the principal of the local school precinct and cause the plan of operation to be posted on the internet website of the large school district and on the internet website of the local school precinct and make the plan of operation available to any person upon request. b does not approve the plan of operation for a local school precinct. The school associate superintendent must notify the principal of the local school precinct of the reasons for not approving the plan and post those reasons on the internet website of the large school district and on the internet website of the local school precinct and make the plan of operation available to any person upon request. The school associate superintendent must assist the principal as necessary to revise the plan of operation. Five. 
Any adjustment to the budget that the principal of the local school precinct determines is necessary after the plan of operation has been approved may be made upon consultation with the organizational team and approval of the school associate superintendent. SEC 26 1. The organizational team for a local school precinct must consist of a. The principal of the local school precinct who shall serve as a non-voting member b. At least two but not more than four members, as determined by the principal, who are teachers or other licensed educational personnel at the local school precinct who are elected by a vote of the teachers and other licensed educational personnel at the local school precinct and at least one half of whom are members of the association representing teachers and other licensed educational personnel. The association shall establish the process for nominating and electing the members pursuant to this paragraph which must allow all teachers and other licensed educational personnel an opportunity to participate and be elected regardless of whether the teachers or other licensed educational personnel are members of the association. C. One member who is employed at the local school precinct, other than the teacher or other licensed educational personnel, who 79th session, 2017-18 is elected by a vote of all such employees, other than teachers or other licensed educational personnel, except that if four members are elected pursuant to paragraph B, then two members who are elected by a vote of all such employees and who are members of an organization that represents those employees. The organization that represents those employees shall establish the process for nominating and electing the members pursuant to this paragraph which must allow any eligible employee an opportunity to vote regardless of whether the employee is a member of the organization. D. A number of parents or legal guardians of pupils who are enrolled at a local school precinct which represents 50% of the total number of voting members if possible, or if fewer are available to accept membership, then the greatest number of parents or legal guardians available. The parents or legal guardians must be elected by a vote of all parents and legal guardians of pupils enrolled at a local school precinct. A parent or legal guardian who is a teacher or other licensed educational personnel or employee of a local school precinct may not be elected to serve as a member pursuant to this paragraph, but may be elected to serve as a member of the organizational team pursuant to paragraph B or C as applicable. The Association of Parents for the School, if there is one, must establish the process for nominating and electing these members pursuant to this paragraph. If no such association exists, the principal of the local school precinct must inform all parents and legal guardians of the opportunity to serve on the organizational team and provide the parents and guardians with information about the responsibilities associated with serving as a member of the organizational team the manner in which to submit a name to be included on a ballot, the date on which a vote will be taken, and any other relevant information. The principal must post such information on the internet website of the local school precinct and provide the information to the superintendent who shall post the information on the internet website of the large school district. The information must also be made available to any person upon request. 2. If one or more special day schools exist within a local school precinct, at least one member selected pursuant to paragraphs B and D of subsection 1 must represent each special day school on the organizational team. 3. In addition to the members described in subsection 1, if the local school precinct is a middle school, junior high school or high. 79th session, 2017. 19. School, the organizational team must have one non-voting member who is a pupil enrolled at the local school precinct who is elected by a vote of all of the pupils enrolled at the local school precinct. Any pupil who attends the local school precinct may request to be placed on the ballot to be elected to serve as a member of the organizational team pursuant to this subsection. A teacher or administrator of the local school precinct may nominate a pupil, but the pupil may only be placed on the ballot if the pupil agrees to have his or her name placed on the ballot. The principal of the local school precinct shall cause a vote to be taken of the entire student body at the local school precinct through secret ballot to elect the pupil member. 
A member elected pursuant to this subsection may only provide assistance and advice regarding the plan of operation for the local school precinct. 4. The organizational team may select one or more non-voting advisory members from the community at large to assist the organizational team and provide input from the community. Such members must not be the parent or legal guardian of a pupil who attends the local school precinct and must not otherwise be qualified to serve as a voting member of the organizational team. 5. The principal of a local school precinct shall assist as necessary with establishing the process for nominating and electing the members described in subsection 1 and shall ensure that each member who is elected pursuant to paragraph D of subsection 1 is informed that the member is not an employee of the local school precinct or the large school district and of any potential liability for serving as a member of the organizational team. 6. A person who receives the highest number of votes must be appointed to the organizational team regardless of the total number of votes cast for the position. 7. Except as otherwise provided in this subsection, an organizational team and its members who are not employees of the large school districts are immune from liability for civil damages as a result of an act or omission in performing any of the duties of the organizational team as set forth in sections 24 to 29, inclusive, of this act. This subsection does not restrict the liability of a local school precinct or the large school district for an act or omission of an organizational team or its members in performing the duties described in sections 24 to 29, inclusive, of this act. Sec. 27. 1. Upon the establishment of an organizational team pursuant to section 24 of this act, the principal of the local school precinct shall schedule the first meeting of the team in fact. 79th session, 2017. 20. As the chair of the team until a chair is selected. The first item of business for the organizational team must be to select a chair and vice chair from among its members. 2. A majority of the voting members of the organizational team constitutes a quorum for purposes of voting. A majority vote of the quorum is required to take action with respect to any matter. 3. Notice of a meeting of the organizational team must be posted not less than three working days before the date on which hours. the meeting will be held. Members of the public must be allowed to attend any portion of the meeting, except any portion of the meeting during which confidential information is discussed and each meeting must include a period for public comment. Yeah. A meeting held pursuant to this subsection is not subject to the provisions of Chapter 241 of NRS. 4. Each member of the organizational team serves until October 1st of the year following his or her election and may serve additional terms. 5. The organizational team must meet not less than one time each month during the school year. 6. If a vacancy occurs in the membership of the organizational team, a new member must be elected in the same manner as the original selection, and the vacancy must be filled within 30 days. Ooh. 7. Each member of the organizational team serves without compensation of any kind. Sec. 28. 1. An organizational team shall a. provide assistance and advice to the principal of the local school precinct regarding the development of the plan of operation for the local school precinct, b. provide continued assistance and advice to the principal of the local school precinct in carrying out the plan of operation for the local school precinct, and c. whenever a vacancy occurs in the position of principal for the local school precinct assist with the selection of the next principal in accordance with the provisions of this section. 2. The organizational team may provide input regarding the principal of the local school precinct to the school associate superintendent not more than two times each school year. 3. Whenever a vacancy occurs in the position of principal for the local school precinct, the organizational team shall establish a list of qualifications that the organizational team determines are desirable for the next principal of the local school precinct and provide the list to the superintendent. The superintendent shall. 79th session, 2017. 21. Post notice of the vacancy. 
the superintendent shall interview qualified candidates and establish a list of at least three, but not more than five candidates to submit to the organizational team. One member of the organizational team must be allowed to participate in interviewing candidates with the superintendent. Four, from the list of candidates submitted by the superintendent pursuant to subsection three, the organizational team shall recommend one candidate for the position of principal within 15 school days after receipt of the recommendation. The superintendent, in consultation with the school associate superintendent, must, in his or her sole discretion, determine whether to hire the candidate recommended. 5. Each person who participates in interviewing candidates pursuant to this section shall comply with all laws that apply to an employer when making a decision about employment. 6. After the principal of the local school precinct is hired, the superintendent may, in his or her sole discretion, reassign and make other employment decisions concerning the principal. Sec. 29. 1. If an organizational team objects to any part of the plan of operation for the local school precinct that is submitted by the principal of the local school precinct for approval pursuant to Section 24 of this Act, the organizational team may submit a request to the school associate superintendent to consider revising the plan in accordance with the recommendations of the organizational team. Two. If the school associate superintendent receives a request pursuant to subsection 1, the school associate superintendent must consider the recommendations of the organizational team and provide a written response to the organizational team upon making a final determination about the plan of operation for the local school precinct within five working days. 3. If the school associate superintendent a. Agrees with the recommendations of the organizational team. The school associate superintendent must work with the principal of the local school precinct to revise the plan of operation. B. Does not agree with the recommendations of the organizational team. The school associate superintendent must inform the organizational team pursuant to subsection 2. 4. If the school associate superintendent does not agree with the recommendations of the organizational team, the organizational team may appeal the decision of the school associate superintendent to the superintendent. The 79th session, 2017. 22. Superintendent must consider such an appeal within five days after receipt of the appeal. The decision of the superintendent is final and not subject to any further appeal or judicial review. Sec. 30. To facilitate broad community input and to provide advice and assistance to the organizational team of any local school precinct and the board of trustees of the large school district, one or more community education advisory boards may be created by 1. The governing body of a city in which one or more local school precincts are located. 2. The Board of County Commissioners of the county in which the large school district is located for any area in the county in which a local school precinct is located and which is not a city. Sec. 31. 1. On or before May 1st of each year, the superintendent shall cause a survey to be administered to all persons involved with the local school precincts in the large school district to measure their satisfaction with the local school precincts. A survey must be administered to each a employee of each such local school precinct by classification of employee. Such classifications must include, without limitation, principals, vice principals and other administrative staff, teachers, custodians, counselors and school nurses. b pupil who attends such a local school precinct. c parent or legal guardian of a child who attends such a local school precinct. 2. On or before May 1st of each year, the superintendent shall cause a survey to be administered to each employee of central services. The surveys must be administered to each employee by classification of employee within each department or other organizational unit of central services to measure the satisfaction of the employees concerning, without limitation, their ability to serve the local school precincts provide services in a timely manner and provide quality services to the local school precincts. Such a survey must also be administered to each school associate superintendent, 
principal and teacher to determine their satisfaction with the services provided to the local school precincts by central services. Three, a summary of the results of the surveys administered pursuant to this section must be posted on the internet website of the large school district before the commencement of the next school year and be made available to any person upon request. 79th session, 2017. 23. Such a summary must identify results by each group of respondents and as overall results. SAC. 32. 1. On or before October 1st of each year, the superintendent shall prepare a report with information from the school year before the immediately preceding school year which includes, without limitation, a, a summary of the responsibilities for which authority to carry out was transferred to the local school precincts pursuant to section 16 of this act, b a summary of the results of the surveys administered pursuant to section 31 of this act, C. An assessment of the performance of the local school precincts based upon specific measures of achievement which are established by the superintendent on or before January 1st of the immediately preceding school year. D. An assessment of the effectiveness of operating local school precincts in the large school district in the manner set forth in sections 2 to 34, inclusive of this act and e any recommendations for regulations or legislation to improve the operation of the local school precincts in the large school district in the manner set forth in sections 2 to 34 inclusive of this act two the superintendent shall forward a report prepared pursuant to subsection one to the a governor b superintendent of public instruction and C. Director of the Legislative Council Bureau for transmittal to the members of the legislature. SAC. 33. 1. The Superintendent of Public Instruction shall take such actions as deemed necessary and appropriate to ensure that each large school district carries out the reorganization of the school district in accordance with sections 2 to 34, inclusive, of this act and any regulations adopted pursuant thereto. 2. Each large school district shall cooperate with the superintendent of public instruction in carrying out the provisions of sections 2 to 34, inclusive, of this act, including, without limitation, by providing any financial or other information requested, including any information requested to ensure that the intent of the provisions of sections 2 to 34, inclusive, of this act is carried out. Three. Information that may be requested pursuant to subsection 2 and which each large school district must provide upon request. 79th session, 2017. 24. To the superintendent of public instruction includes, without limitation, a. Budgets for personnel, excluding any personally identifiable information and names, made available by local school precinct and job function, b. Expenditures made by the large school district, including, without limitation, expenditures for programs, support, transportation, police, legal services, food services, internal services, settlements and risk management payments, c. The amount paid for general administrative services, including, without limitation, the salaries of administrators, staff of central services and school administrators, the salaries of the members of the Board of Trustees of the large school district and support services for the Board of Trustees, and other amounts paid for central services and school administration, and d. Detailed information regarding other budgetary items of the large school district, including, without limitation, identification of all sources of money available to the large school district, yeah. expenditures of money for buildings, capital projects, federally funded projects and state funded projects and any other expenditures of money. Four, each large school district shall provide any information requested pursuant to subsection two as soon as possible and in the format requested by the superintendent of public instruction. If the large school district is unable to provide the information in the format requested, the information must be provided in another easily interpreted format that is approved by the Superintendent of Public Instruction. SAC 34.
the state board shall adopt such regulations as it deems necessary and appropriate to carry out the provisions of sections 2 to 34 inclusive of this act sec 35 NRS 385.007 is hereby amended to read as follows. 385.007 as used in this title, unless the context otherwise requires. 1. Achievement Charter School means a public school operated by a charter management organization, as defined in NRS 388B.020, an educational management organization as defined in NRS 388B.030, or other person pursuant to a contract with the Achievement School District pursuant to NRS 388B.210 and subject to the provisions of Chapter 388B of NRS. 2. Department means the Department of Education. 3. English learner has the meaning ascribed to it in 20 U.S.C. paragraph 7,801 79th session, 2017. 25. 4. Homeschool child means a child who receives instruction at home and who is exempt from compulsory attendance pursuant to NRS 392.070, but does not include an opt in child. 4. Limited English proficient has the meaning ascribed to it in 20 USC paragraph 7801. 25. 5. Local school precinct has the meaning ascribed to it in section 8 of this act. 6. Opt-in child means a child for whom an education savings account has been established pursuant to NRS 353B.850, who is not enrolled full-time in a public or private school and who receives all or a portion of his or her instruction from the participating entity as defined in NRS 353B.750. 6. 7. Public schools means all kindergartens and elementary schools, junior high schools and middle schools, high schools, charter schools and any other schools, classes and educational programs which receive their support through public taxation and, except for charter schools, whose textbooks and courses of study are under the control of the state board. 7. 8. State Board means the State Board of Education. 8. 9. University School for Profoundly Gifted Pupils has the meaning ascribed to it at NRS 388C.040. SEC. 36. NRS 388G.050 is hereby amended to read as follows. 388G.050.1. There is hereby established a program of empowerment schools for public schools within this state. The program does not include a university school for profoundly gifted pupils or an achievement charter school. 2. The Board of Trustees of a school district which is located a, in a county whose population is less than 100,000 may approve public schools located within the school district to operate as empowerment schools b. In a county whose population is 100,000 or more but less than 700,000, shall approve not less than 5% of the schools located within the school district to operate as empowerment schools. 3. The Board of Trustees of a school district which participates in the program of empowerment schools shall, on or before September 1st of each year, provide notice to the department of the number of schools within the school district that are approved to operate as empowerment schools for that school year. 4. The Board of Trustees of a school district that participates in the program of empowerment schools may create a design team for the school district. If such a design team is created, the membership. 79th session, 2017. 26 of the design team must consist of the following persons appointed by the Board of Trustees. A. At least one representative of the Board of Trustees. B. The superintendent of the school district or the superintendent's design. E. C. Parents and legal guardians of pupils enrolled in public schools in the school district. D. Teachers and other educational personnel employed by the school district, including, without limitation, 
school administrators, the representatives of organizations that represent teachers and other educational personnel, F, representatives of the community in which the school district is located and representatives of businesses within the community, and G, such other members as the board of trustees determines are necessary. Five, if a design team is created for a school district, the design team shall a recommend policies and procedures relating to empowerment schools to the board of trustees of the school district and b advise the board of trustees on issues relating to empowerment schools six the board of trustees of a school district may accept gifts grants and donations from any source for the support of the empowerment schools within the school district sec 37 NRS 241.016 is hereby amended to read as follows. 241.0161. The meetings of a public body that are quasi-judicial in nature are subject to the provisions of this chapter. 2. The following are exempt from the requirements of this chapter. A. The legislature of the state of Nevada. B. Judicial proceedings, including, without limitation, proceeding before the Commission on Judicial Selection and, except as otherwise provided in NRS 1.4687, the Commission on Judicial Discipline. C. Meetings of the State Board of Parole Commissioners when acting to grant, deny, continue or revoke the parole of a prisoner or to establish or modify the terms of the parole of a prisoner. 3. Any provision of law, including, without limitation, NRS 91.270-2198.210-239C.140-2818.350-2818.1 380.2201, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1, 390.1
repeat as follows. 130. Used in this chapter, unless the means a person by the government body to be responsible award government and say a local government administrative office means that directly to the administration Stop, I think. Yes. The cars to share. Oh, is that cars we 